Hey jazz fanatics, this is Jazz Arranging episode number two. On occasion I get a request to play a Broadway show tune. And I'm not talking about the ones that Sonny Rollins recorded either. So what do you do? Well, first of all, if you like Broadway show tunes, all I can say is, good for you. I will play them if I can seriously derange them. So sticking with our theme of playing what people want to hear, yet do it in a musically creative and satisfying way, here is my derangement of Stephen Sondheim's Not While I'm Around from the musical Sweeney Todd. Let's watch it, listen to it, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, while our show tune lovers are recovering from the shock, let's start talking about this. The very first thing I did was start reharmonizing the melody by selecting random bass notes and just experimenting how they sounded against the melody. And once I did that, I started adding the chords that go along with it. Obviously, the first chord at A, it could not be any kind of dominant flat 9 because that would be A flat and there's an A in the melody. For a more detailed explanation I would consult the master himself, the one I learned it from, and that's Kenny Werner. Go to his materials and uh, I believe he has a number of things online about it or you can purchase a DVD. So continuing on with this, it's just a matter then of finding bass notes that work, experimenting uh, with the harmony, I'm really big on, if you look at the second measure of A, of using the melody notes as extensions. Over the B flat major 7 sharp 5, you'll notice the E and the F sharp are the tritone and the augmented fifth. So to me, if you're going to arrange something, make the melody notes the extensions. Ask yourself, what is F sharp the sharp 5 of? What is it the flat 5 of? What is it the flat 7th of? The flat 9, the sharp 9, etc. It just makes for a more interesting harmonic palette. Once I had the melody reharmonized, I decided to write an intro. And if you notice, 
three out of the four of those chords are the same as the first four chords of the melody, but I elected to change, instead of repeating the G2 over B, I elected to change the second one to C sharp 7 sharp 9, which provided much better voice leading. The second area that I messed with was the time. I just started hearing this ostinato uh, sustain line in a piano, and so I decided to change it to 3-4 once I figured out, oh, well this is actually 3-4, not 4-4. Four, four. So I did that, and then another thing that I did as far as the rhythm or time-wise is that letter C, I cut the time out altogether and directed it to give it more of an effect, because that then led into the solos. Now it would be a very long tune if I had kept everything in a 3-4 ballad and just played over the changes. As nice as they are, there's just too many and it would just take too long. It'd be a nine minute tune and everybody would fall asleep. So what I elected to do is again keep those first four chords from the intro and go into a double time samba feel. And well, it's, it's actually double time, period. So uh, that's one way which is completely legal to put your individual stamp on it. I doubt if anyone has written an arrangement quite like this, uh, not better or worse, but just this individual treatment of it and also turn it into a double time samba for the solos. In the last episode I talked about my non-musician friends coming back and hearing me play some of these arrangements. The last one was the Beatles' Nowhere Man. Well, they also heard this one too, and do you think that they were appreciative? Of course they were. No one came up and said, well, we really don't like those augmented chords underneath the melody, and and we don't like you going into a, a double-time samba, we don't like the directed section, we don't like any of that. No, of course not. They were happy, once again, that I listened to them and played something that they know, which satisfied them, and of course treating this in a jazz uh, sophisticated arrangement, if I may, to satisfy my own creativity and the people that are playing with me. So everybody wins. Like millions of other YouTube videos, the question becomes, how do we apply this information? Well, if you're an adult jazz student living in the New York Tri-State area and you not only want to learn how to write like this, but have a situation where you can play these compositions and, and arrangements within the context of a regular ongoing small group, and yes, we do have advanced semi-pro level groups that are doing exactly this, then I highly encourage you to visit jazzlabny.com and start a conversation with us. Even in an area of 16 million people, I say this respectfully, there is no one in our market that has the approach and serves adult jazz students like Jazz Lab NY. Call my bluff on it. Until next time.